science has done a lot of good things for humanity. Find cures for diseases, helping people out with their health, and much more things like that. But science can also do a lot of bad things for humanity and cause more destruction than help. In today's story, we'll be looking at that type of example. A continuity tale why you shouldn't play God. So, sit down, relax, and grab your favorite science notebook, because today we'll be winging the story of Happy Puppet Syndrome. It was simple, we thought. Take a few chromosomes, split them up, put them over there, and hey, perfect human being. I'm still not sure what went wrong. Maybe a miscalculation? A misproduce? Or maybe something beyond our control. Who knows? I'm, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Alright, so... We, a few psychologist colleagues and mine, were intrigued by human emotion. Anger, despair, happiness. Was it possible to lock the mind into one emotion? To lock it into a euthoric stake so that no sadness or anger could cloud its thoughts? Theoretically, yes. I won't describe the procedures of our experience to you. Both because I don't want you to repeat the same mistakes I did, but also I fear I will go mad if I have to account them. The horrible, terrible things we did. We were ambassadors. You four and nothing could stop us. And no one can tell us what, what we were doing were wrong. All I will tell you is that we got a hold of a few stem cells, nurtured them into fetuses, and tempered ever so slightly with genetics. The experiment was called the Angel Man Project, and the goal was to create a being which only felt happiness. But something went wrong. Horribly, horribly wrong. Half of the tep substances died unexpectedly, without warning or without cause. The remaining half were mostly born horribly deformed. Three were born well, however. Perfect, we thought. A human with mental capability beyond any other due to its lock, euthoric estate. They were perfectly normal up until 18 months. That's when the four signums appeared. Lack of balance, trouble sleeping and eating, low responsiveness. We all panicked from the inside, of course, but on the outside, we remained calm and continued the project. We should have ended it there. We should have taken those damn subjects and euthanized them and borne them and closed the lab down. But we continued. Things only got worse. The subjects' movements became increasingly sporadic and they still could not utter words although they could laugh boy that they did so often much too often not happy laughter but quiet almost nervous laughing nearly constant no matter how much plain was afflicted on the subject it merely stared at you and laughed as if it was mocking you calling your attempts to harm it futile we expected the subjects to have extra learning capabilities, but quite the opposite occurred. Their mental development was severely delayed. They couldn't pay attention to something for more than a few minutes before lapsing into a laughing fit. But we continued, hoping that these symptoms would clear up as the children got older. We gave a name to the symptoms: Happy Puppet Syndrome. Because the mindless movements of the children made it look like they were puppets on strings. Five years into the project, we realized there was no hope. We could no longer stand the incessant laughing of those children as if they knew something we did not, as if some kind of joke passed between them. 
to look at a child and see it twitch, spawagging, and laugh excessively is a haunting thing. Two of my colleagues have always clipped because they couldn't stand it. I never heard from them afterwards, and I honestly wouldn't blame them. The children had not talked for five years. Only laugh their damn laugh. We went to give them breakfast, and they stared at us with their huge eyes, twitching, giggling, saying nothing. We laid the meal in front of them and left. The meal was laced with toxins that would silently and painlessly kill the subjects. It was a painful thing to do, but it had to be done. However, we will soon learn it would not be that easy. As a friend of mine set a tray of food down in front of one of the boys, the laughing stopped. The boy looked up at my friend, his eyes suddenly grown dead serious, laughing gone. They continued to stare at him and twitching for a while. My friend was in shock and would not move. My colleagues and I stood with pen and notepad in hand, ready to take notes. Suddenly, my friend fell to his knees, grasping his head and yelling furiously. He appeared to be in tremendous pain. My colleagues and I were so surprised by this that we could not do anything but sit and watch. My friend collapsed onto the floor, yelling curses. He choked violently a few times, and then went limp. I held back the oars to vomit, more successfully than a few of my colleagues. Something about this was not normal. A dark presence seemed to tower over us. We Mimi sealed the answers. The boy stopped, looked at the door, and laughed. He fell to the floor, twitching, rolling about, out, laughing intensely. The two others did the same. After a few minutes, the fit seats and they stood up, still twitching, still l- giggling. The lights then went out. I heard crashes, glass sowing, screams. The most terrifying thing of all were the haunting whispers, combined with the quiet laughing. When the lights came back on, the subjects were gone. Two of my colleagues lay unconscious beside me. Their bodies twisted in unnatural angles, blood trickling from their mouths. At first, they appeared to be dead. They showed no vital signs. But as I leaned in, I could hear them laughing ever so slightly. I went in to examine my friend. No pulse, no breathing but he continued to laugh quietly. Although the subjects were gone, I still felt as if something was watching me. Something that just, just at the edge, that was just at the edge of my vision, but I would never be able to see it. Me and one remaining colleague closed everything down immediately. Before leaving, we, he destroyed our resorts and locked and barricaded the light. I lost communication with my colleague, but that's a good thing. I still feel like I'm being watched, though. I can still hear the laughing, the whispering in my dreams and sometimes when I'm awake. When I do, I won. I get up and leave wherever I am. I'm not able to stay in some one place for more than a few days because of this. It spread. Other children were seen with similar symptoms. I had no idea how it spread. It shouldn't be something that spreads. Somebody somewhere made something about disjointation of the 15th chromosome and that, that kept the people happy in the dark for now. The disease was coined Angel Man Syndrome. So far, the spawns are not dangerous. But I know the original still looks somewhere. I just know it. I know they are coming for me. I know they will find me. I accepted this. It's what I get for attempting to tamper with NATO. I leave this layer here as a warning. They're coming for you too. They're coming 
for all of us. If ever you hear whispering, laughing at the edge of your hearing, one. If you feel as if something stands right at the edge of your sight but you cannot look at it, one. Also, I warn you of this. One. Do not tamper with what is not yours. Two. Even angels can be demons in disguise. And three. Do not come for me. I am as good as dead. <laughs>